Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh yeah, the pig um the pig is the mountain and uh the pig actually ploughed up the, the dike. That's the ancient legend about the um black pig's dike that the the black pig dug up the, the like like in ploughing ploughing a, a ridge he with his tusks and, and, and snout. He ploughed up this that's the old legend about about Ben Bulban. But of course it's um it's a real mountain. It really is there. <laughs> you can climb up it if you want to. Uh I've been climbing there since I was a little kid. My dad used to take us up, me and my cousin. And it's kind of where um it's where we learned a lot about uh, mountain climbing, orienteering, navigation, map reading, how to not get hypothermia, which is pretty important in the winter. You get a lot of snowfall up there. And Ireland isn't famous for snow, but the higher up you go, you get snow there every single year and you get big snow drifts and blizzards and everything else. So I quite like that. It's got its own unique climate. So, yeah. <music> You've asked me to give you some idea of what it was like growing up in Sligo under the shadow of Ben Bulban. So now that we've closed, I think perhaps this is a big question. We should go upstairs and I live here over the shop and sit down and I'll tell you as much as I can remember. Ben Bulban doesn't so much dominate the town as it simply enfolds it in a protective embrace. It's really a very gentle mountain. It's not the highest mountain in Ireland. It's not the craggiest mountain in Ireland, but it's a lovely, gentle presence in the area. Bulban, it's just amazing. I think it's the rainiest mountain in the whole of Ireland and it seems to be, I think it's full of limestone caves so there's not much water comes off the outside of it, a lot of goes down through the middle. It's quite fascinating. I will, wherever I travel, I, I will notice, uh, I'll notice a table mountain because it's a table mountain so I always notice that and I, it reminds me of, uh, of Ben Bulban. But it's also a, a complex of um, caverns and caves. It's full of huge caverns and one of them is called the cathedral, it's so big. And they haven't been um, explored because they're too dangerous. They fill up with water. It's, it's very, very, there, there aren't many rivers running down Ben Bulban. They run into the mountain. It's not common. And from here you have one view of it. If you go down the Donegal Road, you, see, you have a different view of it. And the flanks of the mountain are shale fingers going up the slopes. And between each finger of shale there's a very fertile little piece of grass. Well, I arrived in Ireland 
less than a week ago and the mountain was all covered by fog and rain and clouds but as the day passed the mountain was revealing its total self and I could see a painting in different tones of pastel and it's so so beautiful. Well I live in a place just that looks over at Ben Bulb and across Sligo Bay and every day it changes the colors through the year every day I can see the weather coming in over it sometimes it almost disappears sometimes there's a little white cap on it from the snow or the the frost but it's always changing and that's uh, yeah it's great to look at it's very it feels very alive they, they say something in Fermanagh that though that um, a mountain can be very depressing, that if you go to the water it'll wash your, your sorrows away, but a mountain throws them back. I'm paraphrasing, it's something like that. And it can be quite melancholy. And even that Irish exuberance is, is a direct result of it, is a, an, an antidote perhaps of it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so my flat when I was studying in Sligo was actually facing Bimbobin. So most of the most of my memories of my study abroad program were linked to the to the mountain itself. So every morning when I woke up, I had my window facing the whole Bimbobin, and it kind of uh, created an emotional link uh, with the mountain. Like I remember all the good things that I passed in Sligo. Like it was a very good moment of my life. There's a World War II plane on top of Ben Bulban from the Americans and that crashed in the, whenever it was, I know the year, the 1943 let's say, not 100% sure of the date, but it flew the whole way from the US and when it reached the Irish coastline there was no um, real navigation then and nothing would have been lit up and it arrived at night time and it just flew straight into the side of the mountain and it's still there, the wreckage is still up there. I suppose I really should have started by telling you the meaning of the name Ben Balban. Uh, ben Balban in Gaelic is Bian Gulban, and that Gulban was a warrior, a mythic warrior, and Bian means the peak or the point. So it was Gulban's point. And in spite of the fact that it's named after a very brave warrior, I always think as a mountain, it has a very feminine presence. It's a very gentle mountain. Uh, it curves around the town. The town itself, of course, is on the River Garavogue, which is the shortest river in Ireland. It's only two miles from Loch Gill down to the salt water. And of course, it it's, it's also has a, a practical purpose. It's supposed to block off uh, Ulster from Connacht. That's it. Uh, the farmers are all using this land all along. It's used for sheep only. <laughs> and the sheep will graze on it there for the summertime. And then mm. you can put some sheep up on the top of the mountain. And they bring them down to the lower pastures for winter time. And it's fascinating to watch them working with the dogs because the farmers cannot walk over the shale. It's too loose and will slide. But the dogs go over the shale like ballet dancers and they bring the sheep down and then the farmers can sort their own sheep from the markings.
also there's a really cool mines up in Van Bolben called uh, Barium. I'm sure you've, you've probably heard about the mines. Yeah, yeah, really cool stuff, really interesting. And ancient forests, uh, huge cliffs. It's where I learned to rock climb was on the top of Van Bolben. And yeah, great lake over there as well for kayaking. Apart from that, like, it's hard to know what to say because I suppose it is an iconic figure. It's always been there. Now, on top, this end is Ben Bolben, but to take the whole range of mountains, on top of that part, you have the bog, where they make mm. the turf. You know the peat? Yeah, yes. Now, how did there come to be about six or eight foot of peat on top of that mountain? The, the, the ice sheets would come down gradually and into the and the top of Van Bulben and probably Knocknare also even though it's a much lower was, was was free of ice and they've discovered now only recently that there are uh, plants uh, which survived the ice age there and uh, it, it complicates the whole thing you know when the ice melted Ireland is a, a saucer the the the, the a, a huge a uh, freshwater lake formed in the middle of Ireland. And uh, from, the, from this drying out, this is where the huge central bog formed. And the very spine of the mountain runs right out to the sea at Stregia. And there is an enormous amount of fossils there in the rock at Stregia. And I suppose too you would have Maeve Grave on the top of it, as far as I remember off the top of my head. There would be um, a lot of ancient sites in this area and Ben Bulbum would be a promontory with, you can imagine, ancient civilizations placing things there and having ceremonies there to command the position. They now believe that the Neolithic sites on this side of the country are older than the Neolithic sites on the east coast, the New Grange and such, that civilization per se may have started, Irish civilization, if we could call it Irish even, started on this side of the country and worked its way across. Uh, it's the only place in the world that has a very particular species of flower apart from Iceland. And the reason is that the climate on the top of Ben Bulben is almost identical to Iceland. And we get these geese that fly over every year. It takes them seven hours to get here. And they take these seeds from this plant and it's just the perfect climate. So they grow up there and nowhere else in the world. I often include Ben Bulben in my carvings because it's a shape that, that, that imprints itself on you. And uh, it's, it's totally uh, part of your, of your unconscious. It's there. And uh, no matter what angle you see Ben Bulben from, you can recognize it. But it's actually um, an ancient sacred mountain, you know. It, it appears in uh, lots of the um, legends, uh, Germit and Grania. Uh, hid in the caves of Ben Bulben. And the story of their pursuit by Finn over the mountainside and over the countryside around Ben Bulben is a beautiful story. It's a love story. It's a story of hunting. It's a story of the countryside. But uh, that's only one of the many, many mythic tales associated with Ben Bulban. 
I don't know is there an association with uh, the god of high places who is Krom Kruach, but I should imagine there is. There is generally, when that cult was at its apex in Ireland, most mountains, most high mountains in the country had some association with Krom. Uh, one of the cool things as well, I just remembered Ben Bolden back years, millions, probably hundreds of millions of years ago, it was a reef off the coast of Africa. Uh, it was a tropical reef and the reason they can tell that is there's still fossils at the very top of it so before all the plates moved and um, europe was created so that's quite a cool thing as well then i suppose you'd have to look at ben balban and you'd have to think of yeats and yeats great poem under bear ben balban's head all of the academics of the world have come and have debated what exactly Yeats' epitaph on his tomb means, cast a cold eye on life, on death, horsemen pass by. But there is little doubt about what Ben Bulban meant to Yeats. Uh, he was a, a regular visitor to at Lissadell House which is in the sh at the very tip of the peninsula, going out from the spine of Ben Balban. along the slope of Ben Bulban and you'd come to Glencar Waterfall. Glencar Waterfall is uh, also mentioned by Yeats in The Stolen Child. Come away, O oh human child, to the waters and the wild with a fairy hand in hand because the world's more full of weeping than you can understand. It's a, it's a lovely poem set partly around the waterfall at Glencar, which is fed by the streams coming off Ben Bulban. His brother, Jack Yates, who was a tremendous artist, and surely Ben Bulban and the view of Sligo would have inspired him also. A circle has only one centre, but a sphere has an infinity of centres. So everywhere in the world is the centre. Wherever you are is the centre of the world. And um, so Sligo can be, you can centre yourself in Sligo. And uh, poets and writers just happen to, either they're born there or they gravitate to it. And uh, there are these spots. And Sligo is much the same. You know, you get, it's a, it's a kind of a, there's a kind of a magnetic draw into it. thing that comes to my mind when I come over the hill at Carrarow, which is south of Sligo here, it's the, f the first little hillock coming into town. And when I look across at Ben Bulban there, its first feeling is, oh, I'm home. It's uh, yeah, very distinctive. It, it, uh, it represents Sligo. In fact, I do a lot of art, and if I want to draw Sligo, I just draw, and it's Sligo. That's the shape of Ben Bulban. For me, as I arrive towards Sligo, and I say it, the first thing I think is, I'm home. Ben Bulban. coming to Sligo and you're watching you know, the view as you approach Sligo and you see the outline of a town and you see the, 
beautiful outline of that mountain, it's uh, very uplifting, you know. It's hard to, to explain, you know, it's just, it's not just one thing, it's like a mountain of things. The, there are good and bad feelings because I, I had such a great time when I was living in Sligo. Now, every time I come, like, I feel happy to be home. Sometimes I feel more home in Sligo than my, my actually hometown. <laughs> It's, it is Sligo, you know, you come over the curlews and there it is, your home, you see. <laughs> and then as you come closer, Knocknaray comes into view, so, so your home. Ben Bulbin is very uh, homely, you know, you can't mistake it from 20 miles away, there it is, and then you're home. It reminds me of home because I've always associated with home. But if I was to think a little bit further, it kind of gives Sligo a lot of its identity. It's one of the key kind of landmarks uh, within the landscape that we have. And it's been here for a very long time, a lot longer than we have. And it's going to be here after we're gone. I must admit, I've never lived anywhere else uh, other than Sligo. But certainly any Sligo emigrants, when they come home, they'll tell you that's their feeling. Does that answer your question? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah pleasure. Hey, you can play a little bit for us. For us. Oh, the Ben Bulban song. <laughs> uh, I will arise and go now, and go to Inish Free. And that's a song, or a poem, by the wonderful W.B. Yeats. And he's also said, he mentions the mountain in all his poems as well, but um, I think, does anyone have an instrument out there? I might get a little song together for you now, a little melody that reminds us of the mountain. A nice little jig, maybe the first one. Because uh, Sligo and Ben Bulbin is always associated with music. And all I'm doing here is putting down a beat. And now, magically, like the magic of the mountain, you're going to hear the sounds of Ben Bulbin.